Here we go, you guys. Shipping it off to precision. So this is where I'm at. Got the cowl off like the last video. And I do have some other videos. I do got Josh's rusted out shitbox neon, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. And I also have a 525 fuel pump, how I did it video. <laughs> what I'm gonna do right now, you guys, is take off the dump pipe, coming off the wastegate actuator, the tile, keep the tile on there, take the O2 housing off from that V-band clamp, and then I already removed the oil feed line, which is stupid easy. Those two T-bolt clamps will come off and I'll slide that grommet down. I'll take off the vacuum line going to it right here. And I'll also take off the drain. From there, I can go ahead and then take off the cartridge off of the turbine side, removing these bolts right here. And then the compressor housing will come out with the cartridge and then I'll be able to take off those four bolts. The dump is taken off, the exhaust V-band is taken off, the adapter from four bolt to V-band, three inch, that is gonna come off. I haven't loosened any of those bolts to the turbo manifold. That drain is also loose. So, you guys can see how much that moves. There's a gap right here. Real quick, since I'm in here, 14 millimeter. I bent it the way I can get up there. So once that's on there, put a closed wrench on the open end. Like that. Let me just move it right here. We don't want to go ahead and loosen those too much because I still got to go ahead and loosen the cartridge. After that, I'll go ahead and take the turbine housing off. Unfortunately, you guys, it didn't come off as expected. I had to take the compressor housing off. And then I went ahead and I removed the four nuts and washers. So now, I can pretty much go like this and lift it right off. So I'm gonna try to do that. Hoping this goes. Oh, that nut, that nut. The stud is loose. Gotta be careful with the compressor housing. There we go, it's on you guys. my turbo off <laughs> oh, okay so now I gotta go ahead and wrap it um, after I take that four bolt to v-band adapter off and my black fit in sorry I'm shaking I'm so happy oh, look at it Hold on, I must stop shaking sorry I was shaking a little bit. So, okay. Look at this, you guys. Do you see all that? Look at all that. I know it's the oil drain, but where's the gasket? That is the gasket. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I know it was leaking at the top of the cartridge because I've shown my Instagram following a few times my concern. So there it is. This is pretty much the real reasoning. 
you can see leakage all on the cartridge. Let's see if we have any shaft play. Nope, none at all. Now, I wanna somehow flip it over, put it on my foot. No shaft play, that's crazy. It's just the cartridge that's leaking on this fit-in. I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comments below. What I'm gonna do now is put the compressor housing back onto this side. And look at that, you guys. You guys see that? Oh, crap, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Holy crap. -a. You guys see how caked up that thing is? I can hear that, but I don't know what that is. I forget if that's normal or not, but I don't think so. It doesn't look like it's been chewed up at all. Not at all. I don't know. Now that I have it back together, not 110% tight, but still haven't take the adapter off, but this is my fit-in. We're gonna take a close look at it real quick. Basically, where my finger is is the bottom of the threads, and that is the tape line. I know I don't have an issue when it comes to having Teflon tape in my cartridge. There's the fit-in, zoomed in. You know it isn't a Teflon issue. Because even when you look here, you can notice there's no Teflon tape. And legit, I just took it out and grabbed my camera, that's it. And I didn't crack that or move that at all. Still, I even put a 15 when I took that off. So there's the 15 and there's the, I believe it's the 11 millimeter. So I'm gonna take that off, and there's my box. I'm hoping that box is good enough, but if not, I'm gonna grab one tonight in distribution here at the hospital. I got my tools over there, Lexi's still in the car. And we have my neon now down again. It ain't anything new, you guys. My car is always down. I'm pretty thankful that uh, you know my car has made it all the way to Washington, but hopefully after this rebuild from Precision, my car will be 110% again, I believe, other than the exhaust. Chris, we're gonna go ahead and do that before I leave, for sure. <laughs> MPX! You may have found it. <laughs> Chris is a guy with an MPX. Look at it, it's, yo, it's completely still wrapped, wrap. still wrapped. Ooh, this is what Lady in Red Lexi built needs. We got you, we'll take care of you. Um, we'll talk about that when we're in person again. But there it is. That's how she's gonna stay for a few days. Well, <laughs> more like two to three weeks, 14 to 21 days. If you guys like the video, smash that like button. And if you guys are not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Sorry, I'm not using my stabilizer either. I'm just going ham. If you made it till the end, I appreciate you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think has gone wrong with that. Obviously no shaft play on the exhaust or the intake. When I say intake, I mean compressor side, compressor wheel. So I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and send it in and send it. <laughs> All right, that's word, you guys. I spent $76 and then I did the $2,000 insurance. And I didn't do the priority extra large box because I didn't have an address to ship it. But it's on its way to Precision. Like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and uh, stay tuned, you guys. Never know what's gonna happen next.